Good morning, and thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Lynn Parenti. I'm a curator in the Division of Fishes, and I've been with the Smithsonian Institution since 1990. Uh, today, I'd like to talk to you briefly about the field of biogeography, which investigates how life and Earth have evolved together, uh, and in so doing, creates some patterns that can be used in conservation policy uh, and other programming efforts. The first part of the title, There's No Place Like Home, refers to a very critical concept within evolutionary biology and biogeography, and that's called endemism. Darwin, in his volume on the origin of species, has an entry in his glossary for endemic, meaning peculiar to a given locality. Uh, and I like to think of it as practically an organism signature. Uh, you all know about uh, endemism. So if I say panda, you think of China, or more specifically, uh, bamboo forests. Uh, in China. If I say kangaroo, you think of Australia or New Guinea. Uh, it also works in reverse. So if I say uh, Amazon basin, you might think of piranha or some other um, iconic animal or plant that lives within, within Amazonia. Uh, this is a photograph above of a colorful little uh, rice fish that I described with an Indonesian colleague in 2010. Uh, it is endemic to a spring-fed uh, pool on Muna Island, the small island off the southeast coast of Sulawesi, uh, indicated by that little red star there and then blown up on the right. Uh, this particular species, uh, like many others, has a very small area of endemism, uh, but some species can have very broad areas of endemism in contrast. Uh, and this was um, uh, clearly uh, shown by my colleague Vic Springer in his monograph in 1982 on Pacific Plate Endemics. Uh, and in this, uh, the map above, uh, Vic has um, uh, put in the distribution uh, records for shorefish species that live solely on the Pacific Plate, that is the largest lithospheric plate on Earth. They're endemic to the plate, they live there and nowhere else on Earth. There are also some patterns that are complementary to this, as on the uh, map below, uh, where we see um, that there are some, uh, th this particular species that uh, Vic plotted, uh, the cobia, is very broadly distributed throughout the world, but it's absent from the Pacific Plate. Now, this particular uh, type of method where we would take uh, distribution patterns uh, and overlay them on some uh, uh, basic uh, geological or tectonic features uh, is very useful in uh, showing how life and Earth have a similar uh, or complementary patterns. And what I'm going to do is focus on the, if I can show this, on the Western Pacific on the islands that run between uh, Asia and Australia, commonly known as the Indo-Australian Archipelago. This is one of the most complex regions on Earth. Uh, in yellow here we have the uh, Eurasian plate, uh, and in red the Indian-Australian plate. Uh, the intervening green bits are uh, pieces of microcontinental terrains, uh, volcanic island arcs, and so on. Uh, this was produced by the Southeast Asian Research Group uh, in London. Uh, it's a generalized summary, but I think you get the point of how complex this area is. Now, what I want to do is focus on Sulawesi, which is uh, one of the most geologically complex areas in the most geologically complex area on Earth. Uh, its assembly began about 15 million years ago, uh, and uh, as you can see, it has yellow, green, and red bits. Uh, and it, uh, Sulawesi is iconic within biogeographic studies because of its high degree of endemism, and no matter what group you look at, um, there are a high number of endemic species. And I've just given a metric here for the freshwater fishes. 75% of these species are, are endemic to Sulawesi. Again, they live there and nowhere else on Earth. Well, I'd like to call your attention to the two islands on the lower right or southeast in this map, uh, Muna, which we've seen before, and Bhutan. Uh, the geologists tell us that these um, have different geological histories. Uh, and the question that I, as a biogeographer, ask is, uh, do, the, do the animals tell us that as well? So what we did was uh, go to Sulawesi uh, with the Indonesian field team. I went there in 2010. Uh, we were able to collect the endemic species uh, in um, its type locality, its endemic area in uh, Muna Island, uh, and also were pleasantly surprised uh, to realize that there was a, a larger group there. We discovered a, an endemic biota uh, that um, was, was previously unknown, and these are some undescribed species which we will be describing. They have relatives uh, in Asia, in the Asian continent. Bhutan, 
uh, is much less well known. Uh, and there's just one study that was, uh, it's actually not yet published by a, a British biologist, David Bird. Uh, he has uh, gone to Bhutan. Uh, and as you can see here, there is a quite a different biota uh, in Bhutan. It is dominated by gobies. Uh, and these are uh, of some taxa that had previously been known as Australian endemics. Uh, so what biogeography has done is confirm what the geologists already knew, that is that these are uh, two different areas have quite a different history. Uh, what can this tell us about conservation biology? Well, you know, we, we, we uh, have very difficult questions to address within conservation. What areas do we conserve? How big are they? How small? How many species? And so on. And I think the information here tells us that, uh, well, if you ask me what, what species would I conserve in this region, I'd say one from group A uh, and one from group B. Uh, it's not the largest area here, but it's one that maximizes both the uh, biological diversity and geological diversity in this area. Uh, and that's what biogeography can do for conservation policy. Thank you. <laughs>